Hey, everybody, welcome back to Sales Performance Improvement Radio. I'm your host, Terry Hansen. Great to be back with you once again. I'm excited for this particular episode because I want to share with you a couple of really uh, I guess to me, some pretty interesting and profound insights as I have been meeting with different companies all around the country, actually interviewing for a brand new uh, director and VP level uh, position over sales enable- enablement and sales operations. And I wanted to share with you some of the insights that I've learned as I've talked with tons and tons of these uh, different tech and SaaS and software companies. And uh, hopefully these will give you some ideas on what exactly it is that sales enablement is, is really striving to solve and achieve inside organizations. So stick with me. For over 15 years, I ran a successful outsourced sales enablement and consulting firm before it was acquired by Rise Holdings in 2020. But while I was able to help hundreds of my own clients improve their sales productivity, marketing effectiveness, and grow their revenue, the sales growth game is always changing. Every year brings new challenges to growing sales as technology, competition, economic conditions, and customer buying behavior change. In these turbulent times, how do you improve sales and marketing and grow revenue when you're new to your leadership position or you don't have the right resources in place or you're just battling dysfunction inside your own company? That's the question and this podcast will give you the answers. These days, I'm on a new quest to discover what's working in today's dynamic sales and marketing environment and bringing those treasures and insights back to you. My name is Terry Hansen and this is Sales Performance Improvement Radio. So let me rewind the clock a little bit and give you maybe just a little bit of context. As you may uh, know or may remember, back in 2005, I started uh, an outsourced sales enablement and training company called Hanson Group Company and uh, ran that for the better part of 15 years and had the chance to work with hundreds and hundreds of different companies all across the country and really had a phenomenal experience working with senior executives and uh, um, C-level leaders at, at all sorts sorts of different organizations. And uh, the over the years, I learned really a, uh, gained a lot of great experience and learned a ton of different things. And we had enough success that as you probably know, in 2020, my company was acquired by Rise Holdings and I joined their executive team uh, over uh, with expanded responsibilities over customer success. Uh, and uh, and sales enablement. Now, uh, the, the time kind of eventually came after a period of time where I uh, put my notice in with Rice Holdings and have kind of began, uh, kind of took a little bit of a sabbatical for a couple of months and have been able to enjoy uh, just a little bit of downtime and and as I've kind of pivoted and shifted and kind of re-examined where I want my career to go over the next uh, really 20 years or so. I'm 46 at this point in time and I uh, feel like I've got you know 20 good years plus left uh, in, in terms of working hard and building and continuing to grow and build my career and as I've sat back and thought a lot about where I want my career to go and what I want to accomplish I there's there's no other place for me other than than sales enablement sales operations this whole idea of of working to help companies generate stronger return on investment from their sales and marketing and customer service efforts. So with that it kind of soul searching in mind, I've I've taken to Indeed and LinkedIn and the ladders and career builder and monster and all the different job boards out there and even past clients and have been on the hunt for the last uh, several weeks looking for kind of the right uh, VP and director level position over sales enablement. And as interview opportunities have come in and as I've had a, a chance to talk with uh, human resource teams and and uh, and uh, chief revenue officers and vice presidents and and other leaders in in uh, over over sales over revenue over marketing um, and, and whatnot and as I've heard them share some of their stories I've always asked this question where are you seeing the biggest dysfunctions uh, right now when it comes to sales or sales enablement where where are the biggest challenges where are the biggest problems what kinds of initiatives are you focused on uh, what in the next 90 days what are the what are the biggest priorities uh, that you have right now that you're working on and as I've heard them I've taken uh, you know pretty copious notes and I've, I've worked really hard to kind of assimilate and kind of collect into one place all of the different feedback and answers that I've gotten from them. And so I, I, I wanted to take a minute and actually share with you some, some, of the, some of the real jugular, real world problems and issues and challenges that particularly tech 
companies, SaaS and, and tech companies are dealing with right now that say they're looking to sales enablement directors and sales enablement leaders to, to, to come in and solve and help and address. So if you happen to be new to the sales enablement world, if you don't know much about it, or if it's an area that you want to get into, or if you are, you know, new to a particular position and you're kind of wondering what, where, where should I be focused? Uh, what should I be focusing my time and effort and energy on? Uh, then I want to share a, a, this list with you and hopefully it'll give you some, some guidance and some instruction and direction uh, on the kinds of areas that, that, uh, that you definitely should be focused on and uh, happy to do so. So at the tippy top of the list, uh, so I've got uh, a list here that I've just kind of handwritten. It's actually a two page list if you can if you can believe that, but I just want to run through a couple of these. But one of the first ones that I've, I've heard uh, directors and chief revenue officers and VPs tell me is that they want to certainly maximize the selling time of their sales reps. They feel like for one reason or another, sales reps are being pulled in too many different directions and distracted from their core function of of working with leads and presenting solutions closing sales etc so they want to find ways to maximize the selling time number two is they want to find ways to improve the 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 selling effectiveness of the sales reps helping them reach higher levels higher percentages of their quota so instead of hitting 30 percent or 60 percent or 70 percent of their sales quota having them hit uh you know 90 and 100 and 110 120 percent of their quota uh, another interesting bit of feedback that i've heard uh, i've heard these uh, executives talk to me about is assimilating data you know, uh, data and good intel and good information is at the heart and soul of good sales enablement work. And sometimes it's hard to diagnose what problems are or what's causing the problems or know where to focus your sales enablement efforts if, if you don't have good information at your fingertips. And if the tools and, and resources and, and things, uh, the, the tech stack, the, all the different um, uh, software tools that the company might be using if those aren't providing good relevant data. So one of the things that they've mentioned is being able to capture good relevant uh, data and information more effectively and more efficiently. And sometimes it's a problem with maybe they're not getting the full usage or benefit out of Salesforce or Marketo or HubSpot or uh, some of these other uh, sales and marketing automation platforms and tools. But it's, it's not only capturing better quality higher quantities or better quality data. But uh, number two, it's also interpreting and translating that data and having that data actually tell stories and communicate what the trends are, what's good, what's bad, uh, what's going well, you know, and where the opportunities are. So uh, interpreting, interpreting and translating that data and that information is kind of a second key area. The third in that, in that little bunch is, 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 is uh, turning that information into usable, digestible, and actionable insights that, that, that you can actually take action on to capture more opportunities or mitigate risk as, as, as needed. So I love, I love what some of these executives have said, increasing the quantity and quality of, of data being captured. Number two, translating and interpreting that data so that the story cut becomes very clear and, and, and able to be understood. And then number three, turning that, those, those insights into usable, digestible, actionable pieces of intel that you can do, actually do something with. Another key insight that uh, a lot of a lot of SaaS and technology companies are struggling with right now is as their software uh, platforms and as their products and their services evolve and they come out with new product features, new different uh, elements, new versions, etc. Rolling out those changes, rolling out those updates to customers and making customers aware of it, but mo more importantly, making the the customer service and the sales teams aware so that they can more effectively sell and do their job. So there's there seems to be a little bit of a breakdown of education and process there that they're, they want to really uh, fix and improve. Um, another key element that they've mentioned is is this idea of of improving the quality of their decision making. Sometimes 
the uh, executives feel like they are making decisions a little bit arbitrarily. They are anecdotal. Uh, a sales manager might reference something, a sales rep might give some sort of feedback, but there's not a lot of substantive data or, 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 um, or metrics to support that. So they want more data, they want more metrics to help provide the, the support and the validation that they need so that they can make wise and smart decisions related to marketing or related to sales or even related to customer service. So I think that's really interesting, really all for the purpose of, again, seizing brand new opportunities that might be hidden to them, or uh, again, mitigating or avoiding or reducing any sort of risks or liabilities that the organization might have. Um, a, a big one that I've, I keep hearing again and again and again in the uh, job interviews that I'm, I'm having with, uh, with these SaaS companies, and that's kind of where I'm, I'm vectoring and focusing on is, is, is working with technology and SaaS companies specifically personally is what I'm interviewing for and focusing on. But what's interesting is I keep hearing again and again and again how, 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 how poor they feel like their sales onboarding and orientation process is. They will report that once they hire a brand new sales rep, they'll go through the first or second week of, of orientation and onboarding. And then these newly onboarded sales reps who've already been kind of ramped up, if you will, that they will land in their positions, but they haven't been set up for success. They keep bombarding their sales managers with countless uh, emails and texts and, and interruptions about basic fundamental things related to, uh, you know, how, how should I be hunting and prospecting uh, for leads or how do I use the CRM or what are the rules or what are the, what's exactly the process that I should be following for this or what sort of expectations or quotas should I be hitting or, um, you know, all, all these kinds of different things. But it's very interesting to me to, to consider and to think about um, that, that the overall sales onboarding and orientation process for many of these tech companies and SaaS companies, they're, they're not very satisfied with it. The sales reps are coming out poorly prepared, poorly, um, poorly, uh, uh, yeah, or oriented, and are, are still struggling quite a bit with uh, some of the basic fundamentals of their of their position. Uh, another key element is uh, is a lot of companies already have a CRM, a customer relationship management uh, a database or platform that they are using, but uh, almost unanimously, they feel like that system plus the two or three or four other software tools that they're using uh, that they call the tech stack, the tech, you know, the software stack of, of tools that they're using, they're not maximizing them. They're only using maybe 10, 20, 30% of all the features. They're not getting the most usage and the most benefit from them and looking to sales enablement to help them get get more for their buck there so i think that's um uh i think that's very interesting um another uh, another key element that i think is interesting is there's a there's a bit of a continuation or a continuum in the customer life cycle you know customers go from just being a lead to an opportunity then they kind of progress to signing the agreements and becoming a customer. And then they kind of progress to becoming a super loyal advocate client, right? And there's kind of this continuum over the course of their lifestyle or their, their life uh, life cycle, right? And, and marketing plays an important role at the very beginning, uh, generating that lead and nurturing that lead and getting it ready for the sales team. Sales obviously then takes the ball and runs with that. And then they go through the qualification presentation and closing processes and cues that 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 company or that individual to uh, the customer service team uh, who then takes that ball and they do good with account management and customer support and customer service and all of that and working to retain that customer long term so we got these three departments marketing sales and customer service that that work in tandem and and one of the interesting things in the interview process that I've heard again and again and again is is that the teams are struggling with the handoffs between those three departments marketing to sales to customer service there's various breakdowns and bottlenecks and things that just aren't aren't going as well as they could and, th and uh, balls are getting dropped and things are slipping through the cracks and causing uh, revenue and profitability problems so i thought that was also very interesting that that seems to be kind of one of the key ailments that a lot of tech and SaaS companies are dealing with a couple more that um, I, I just found really really interesting is is um is obviously with the pandemic 
that we have been wrestling with over the last, uh, really now at this point, almost three years, uh, is is everybody's working remote. A lot of these tech companies are 100% remote, and all of their companies include or employees, including their leadership, all work from home. Frankly, very few people work in a corporate corporate office uh, anymore. So when it comes to training or coaching or feedback sessions or, or or mentoring, that sort of thing, one of the common questions is, is we don't think we we have the right kinds of coaching and training and mentoring programs in place. And uh, to, uh, to, to boot, um, we don't, we don't know, frankly, the, a good way to do that with remote workers. And so training remote sales reps and helping them stay engaged, uh, is, is a big challenge that they're wrestling with as well. So, and similar on that, on that note, another element is, is a lot of tech and SaaS companies are struggling with, uh, creating effective feedback loops between their customers and the product development teams. So as customers are using the software product or any sort of product or service, mining and gathering good customer intel and good customer feedback and information and making sure that that's translated into really digestible, usable, actionable insights and that those insights get over to the product development team so that they can make the necessary feature upgrades and and that sort of thing. So creating those feedback loops so that good communication is happening is also uh, a, a real struggle there. Um, another one that was interesting that I've heard is that there isn't much standardization between uh, between the teams. So in terms of the sales processes or uh, how marketing is tracked or the different kinds of sales collateral content, uh, how, pre- how salespeople give presentations and demos, like everybody kind of has their own way of going about doing it. Everybody's using their own bits and pieces, but not others. And so there's not much standardization and, um, and systematization uh, you, you know, across the departments and teams, and that's causing some a lot of inefficiencies and breakdowns. Um, um, two two more quick ones, and then we'll kind of wrap up this little piece. But I, I also noticed that the sales uh, one of the complaints is that the sales reps don't have as good of technical knowledge as they could or should. They oftentimes will. Uh, get asked questions by sales prospects that they can't answer. It's maybe a little too techy for them and they struggle there and uh, the overall confidence of the, the customer is shaken a bit. And last but not least is um, is is marketing continues to to struggle breaking through all the noise in the marketplace. Uh, many, uh, many industries are flooded by co- competition and lots of different alternatives. And so a lot of companies are struggling with Me Too itis and trying to figure out a way to to break through all of the noise and uh, especially when buyers are being bombarded by proactive sales outreach and and other inbound efforts and and things like that. So uh, anyway, I share this kind of long list with you to help you as potentially a brand new director of sales enablement or um, or what have you kind of get a better sense for what what are the kinds of issues and challenges and problems that sales enablement really is designed to solve inside a company and you can see that it's not just narrowly focused on maybe just sales but it's expansive to sale uh, marketing sales and even customer support and customer service and so we'll talk a little bit more about that later on but but make no mistake if you're new to your position in sales enablement or if you're uh, if you're a sales manager and you've been asked to take on some sales enablement type roles and responsibilities and you're kind of looking around wondering like well what exactly do I do or what is sales enablement and how does it where is it focused and what what what's this all about I hope this list of pretty common problems and issues and challenges that I've been able to kind of glean as I've gone through my own, you know, job interview process, looking for the next opportunity for myself and my, uh, in my career has opened up your eyes and given you some, some new food for thought. Uh, these are common problems that the, that the very best of the best companies out there are wrestling and dealing with. So if you happen to be, uh, you, you know, uh, one of those leaders over revenue marketing or sales, or, or operations and you notice some commonalities, just know that you along with everybody else is kind of climbing the same mountain, climbing the same hill. So you're not alone. And uh, what my desire and focus 
uh, is for this particular podcast is to spend to spend the episodes after this keep diving into more detail on how to solve and how to address and how to fix a lot of the problems that we've just gone over and talked about. So anyway, rest assured that uh, future episodes of our uh, uh, sales performance improvement radio show will be focused very much on addressing a lot of these issues. So it's been a fun experience going through this job interview process and just hearing what's going on in the marketplace right now in uh, at this point, February of 2022. And I have no doubt that uh, that as the year progresses, even more issues will come up and it's a dynamic, interesting world that we're uh, living in right now. So anyway, great to be with you. Keep up the good work and can't wait to be back with you once again on the next episode of Sales Performance Improvement Radio. Take good care. We'll see you soon.